right, and we are back for round two. Uh, this round, we're going to have a pretty exciting match. We're going to have Elves on with Caleb Schroyer, and he's going to be versing Goblins uh, on Dan it's Dan Ford, right? Dan Ford? Dan Ford. So, <coughs> um, be uh, actually, Ben Chamberlain will be actually co-casting with me this round. It's going to be an exciting time. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at what we have here with our Goblins player and with our Elves player. So, let's start with the Goblins. Uh, most of it looks pretty standard. What I'm really curious about is how many tar fires he has, which looks like it's going to be four. And if he has any pyrokinesis, and he does have one pyrokinesis, so the four tar fires and one pyrokinesis, those are going to be the major players in the first round because they can kill all the elves, especially that pyrokinesis splitting across the board. It's going to, you know, really be able to clear off any any unwanted combo elves. Um, and then with Caleb Schroyer, I think he's looking at a pretty normal list. I've seen his many times. Ooh, he does have a Leovold in his, which is interesting. Um, and two Crater Hook Behemoths. But other than that, it's a pretty standard list. Three Natural Orders, four Glimpse, four Green Sun, all the normal good, fun elves. <coughs> so, Ben, what do you expect? Uh, who, who, who do you think this favors in, in round one? Elves or Goblins? Uh, I would say that Elves are probably going to be the most explosive deck for Game 1. Um, goblins can get it with the right draw, but um, I would say Elves probably has better better goldfishes to swarm the board and uh, keep them at bay until they get like a crater hoof out or uh, something like that. Yep. That's, that's kind of where I am sitting too. I think Elves are going to have the upper hand. I think the only way Goblins can really pull ahead is if they have that Pyrokinesis. If he has that in the first... Um, in the first round or the first game, then that's that's going to help an awful lot. So. Yeah, definitely. All right, looks like both players are shuffling up. Caleb has presented, and so is Dan. So let's get started. See who even wins the dice roll. So that's going to matter a lot, right? I mean, these are both really low to the ground decks. So if Caleb wins the dice roll, I think that puts him very far ahead. Um, yeah, definitely. These are two decks that are looking to go as fast as possible. So uh, any any sort of uh, initiative they can get is a huge boon for them. It looks like Caleb did win that dice roll, so let's see if he can keep his opening seven. Alright, so I'm a little bit of a hard time seeing Caleb's hand. I saw Wirewood Symbiote, Windswept, he looks like a Heritage Druid. Um, can't quite tell. Windswept, Heritage Druid, Heritage Druid. Dry, uh, Wirewood Symbiote, and I think I see the Morph Elf name is, is eluding me at the moment, but... And we're off to the way, so we're going to start with a Wirewood Symbiote. Interesting, I would expect the Heritage Druid to start, uh, since that's an insect and that can't be used next turn. Uh, what do you think the reasoning is behind the Wirewood start? Uh, well, I'd say the, the Heritage Druid, they do get the, the option um, to kind of play that card uh, whenever they choose and get started. Um, Wirewood Symbiote isn't an elf, so it, it can't really play into like a turn one elf, turn two, two elves, including a Heritage Druid play. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, the Symbiote's still a fine start, so he might just be trying to protect his elves. That's fair, that's fair. And it looks like he just picked up a Glimpse of Nature. Now that's going to be a big draw in a couple, uh, probably next turn. Um, that's going to allow him to really go off. Oh, it looks like he's just going to fire it off right now, actually. And fetch. It looks like he's and getting then, started. There is his Heritage Druid. So he, I don't believe he's going to be able to um, continue the chain, though. I don't know of anything. I don't see. I didn't see anything in his deck list that would allow him to do anything too crazy. Uh, just the glimpses. Yeah, I don't see anything else. So should be a draw one. A little bit of a cycle there. Uh, just trying to get deeper into his deck. Maybe his hand's a little anemic otherwise. And uh, we we did mention that Gawain did get their best start, Aether Rail in turn one, uh, which will help them be able to stay at tempo. So let's see what they have. Cavern, I'm assuming on Goblins, unless yeah, he's really hopefully. feeling frisky. Uh, he's going to go ahead and port on Caleb's upkeep. Yep, trying to slow Caleb down at any, every chance he gets while, uh, while he gets the vial going and uh, can get his engine online. Yep. And we see the Queen Ranger bouncing that forest um, so he can get another his land drop in, essentially just ramping him one. It doesn't look like he had a land drop otherwise. And there's the Nettle Sentinel. Uh, that will give him all three elves that he's going to need for that Heritage Druid. But it looks like he has nothing to do. Wow, with three lands, nothing to do with uh, three mana. And a Lackey. I don't think that Lackey's going to make it. 
into the red zone this round. Yeah, probably not. <coughs> perhaps, uh, perhaps once he gets it large enough to break through that nettle sentinel, but uh, otherwise that guy's kind of just uh, sitting back for now. Yeah. Um, if he has a tar fire, he can force a block at least. Uh, if he has a pyrokinesis, obviously that would be a, a massive play, but past that, it's just gonna, it's gonna be just a one-one for one. Yep, definitely uh, good for Dan to be able to take advantage of uh, Caleb's more uh, inconsistent draw that he has right now. Mm -hmm. And we see a matron. I'm expecting the uh, a gem palm incinerator if I had to guess, um, but I could be wrong. I am not a goblins player, so <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, he does have a vial too, so he might have something he wants to do with that vial. I am curious, do you see anything else you might be tutoring for? Any really spicy one? Oh, maybe a uh, Goblin Sharpshooter. Does he have that in the main? Uh, let's see. Oh, interesting. Yeah, there's a, sh a no, Spark Shot. That, that's just the, that's the Lord, right? The Haste Lord, plus one, plus one. You're yeah, that's the plus one, plus one in Haste to that's your Goblin. Interesting, so he really wants to push this uh, Lackey through, it looks like, is what I would guess based on this play. Maybe he has another Lord in hand, and next turn he can Vile up to three Lord Lord. Yeah, just something along those lines. Get a lot of pressure, hopefully uh, get Caleb to lose some material and blocks to stay alive. There's a small chance he maybe already has the sharpshooter in his, op in his hand. Let's take a look. Uh, I don't, so it's a little glary, I can't quite see. I see a Tuk-Tuk Scrapper. That's not going to do him any good this r in this matchup. Uh, the pass that I can't really tell is in the hand there. Uh, I think there's a Warren Instigator in there too. Oh, and we're going to have a natural order on Caleb's side. So this is a good one for Caleb to break the ice. Yeah. So he's gonna be eating. I'm assuming crater hub behemoth, and he has <laughs> two untapped attackers plus, of course, the he the behemoth. They're gonna get plus five, plus five. So that's 15, 20, 22, 23. So that is lethal, I believe, unless my math is off. So that is going to be a lethal yeah, attack. Can you hand activate his queer ranger as well? To un oh, to untap the. Yep, that is yep, definitely that lethal. Is, there. Uh, that no is question there. there. <coughs> Sting Scourger might be able to shake it up, but it doesn't look like it. <laughs> All right, so game one goes to Caleb Schroyer, um, and let's go and take a look at these sideboards. So I'll start with Caleb. Uh, he has two Nissa Vital Force, one Malera Silvox Outcast, one Shaman of the Pack, two Thoughtseize, three Abrupt Decay, three Surgical Extracting, and, and three Cabal Therapy. Um, so what do you think he's going to be bringing in in this round? I honestly am kind of on the side that he'll try to keep his deck as streamlined as possible. I mean. His game plan's pretty good against goblins, and he doesn't really want to mess that up. Is there anything that stands out though to you? Uh, nothing's really coming out. I mean, I don't think, like with it, with it being a combo deck, there's not really a whole lot of dead cards in uh, in Caleb's main deck since he's everything's kind of trying to do the the same thing, mm -hmm. um, and there there aren't really any you know home run uh, anti goblins or aggro cards in the yeah. sideboard. I mean, maybe Shaman of the Pack to flood the board and buy some time, but Caleb's deck, I think, is already already quite a bit faster, so if he really thinks that uh, Dan is going to bring in a lot of stuff to slow him down, um, the Shaman might help there. Yep. Uh, but past that... That's that's pretty much the, the main one I'd be looking at. Let's look at our um, goblins player, though. Yeah, looking at Dan, he's got Thorn of Amethyst, not going to do a whole lot there. Mm -hmm. Mindbreak Trap... Blood Moon, Sting Scourger, Tuk Tuk Scrapper, Pyrokinesis, a Sharpshooter, Surgical Extraction, and Sudden Demise. Sudden, oh, that's the. Oh, that's. Uh, I, I think that one deals. It's the Time Spiral one that deals damage depending on which phase you play it in. Oh, really? Uh, could be getting it confused. Let's see here. So Sudden Demise, choose a color, Sudden Demise deals X damage to each creature of the chosen color. It's uh, R and X for the mana cost, so that one's going to be pretty good for him to bring in. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'd say Sudden Demise, Pyrokinesis, Sharpshooter, uh, I... maybe Sting Scourger, all those look pretty good at disrupting Caleb's strategy. What do you think about the uh, Mind Break Trap? Uh, it, it can uh, probably stop like a, a Natural Order, maybe on a Glimpse Draw. Uh, but it's, uh, I don't know, it, it, it could be one you bring in, but I would say it's the last card yeah. that you're bringing in on that, on that yeah. list. 
I agree with that. I just, I don't know, that, that is a card that I feel like can really break up an Elves player's explosive draws. Um, yeah. Especially if they're trying to glimpse. And a lot of times they're just going to play Hydrogen and they'll end up trying to cast three spells. And sniping the last spell can sometimes, I think, be uh, a pretty big deal. But I agree, it is, it is the last thing you'll be sighting in. Yeah, definitely. So players shuffling up, <coughs> getting ready. Now Dan will be on the play, which does definitely help him a lot. Um, Get, gives him, if he, especially if, if he has the lackey turn one, that'll force Caleb to pretty much have the death rate shaman or he'll be chump blocking. Mm -hmm. uh, or now, sentinel. Oh yeah, or a sentinel, yep. Also true. So, drawing up, Caleb has, let's see, two lands, green sun, glimpse, wirewood symbiote, and I can't quite yeah. tell the last card. And yeah. to keep, uh, start with a lackey. Best start so he can have. Coming well, out the gates with lackey, pretty good. Um, it looks like that card on the left in Dan's hand might be one of the sideboard cards. I couldn't quite tell. It looks like it would be like a foil reprint of something. It could just be an instigator, too. Always possible. <coughs> and it looks like we're going to green sun for one. We're going to get that dried arbor, who I am sure will be chump blocking if this, uh, this lackey gets in. But let's see if he has any removal for it, because if he does, and he can get this lackey in on turn turn two, that, that's going to be a huge a huge game. Yeah, huge things swing. will get out of hand pretty fast if uh, if he gets the connect here. Oh, that's a gem helmet I Oh, okay. I'm almost 100% positive. positive. But he's oh, just going to go on Wasteland. Or, oh, or Wasteland, yeah. Beautiful. So he's going to get the Lackey in. He's going to take one, and then it looks like he'll go ahead and search up with the Matron. Uh, what do you think he's going to get with the Matron? He's going to have another Lackey next turn. He does have the gem helmet, so he's know he knows he'll probably be able to get it. Um, what do you expect? Um... Yeah, that's uh, oh. stuff. I mean, looks, looks like, like a, it's sharp a sharpshooter. Shooter. Yeah, which I mean, that makes sense. Probably the best possible mm -hmm. one for the matchup. Mow down all the little elves. So. Um, <laughs> no real way to stop him. <sighs> yeah, just the death right and the um, the Nell Sentinel don't die to it, and that's that's not enough to do anything significant. So we'll see a, a yeah. wirewood and a Quirin Ranger. Some really good chump blocker or uh, <laughs> blockers. Some good fodder, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not chump blocking. They'll be trading if it attacks and they, they actually get to block. Yeah, it's gonna be tough for Caleb <laughs> to get out from under this one. Mm hmm Yeah, especially because he can just end up casting the sharpshooter in two turns if he forces you know, if he kills one, forces a block on the other. He can just kinda slowly grind him down until he gets the sharpshooter and then start going to town. Mm hmm So let's see what he does. We know he has the gem palm. He would have to start by killing that wirewood symbiote so that he doesn't just lose value. Yep, doesn't get blinked by the uh, return a creature effect. Mm -hmm. And looks like that's what we're seeing. A gem palm cycled onto uh, that wirewood. So gem palm cycle, I believe, it's for each goblin you have in play, you deal that much damage to a creature, correct? And then you draw a card. Yeah, yeah, deal X when you cycle it, or X is the number of goblins. Interesting, we're not going to see the attack. So he values his lackey more than the Quirin Ranger on his opponent's side. Uh, what do you feel, how do you feel about that? I mean, he, he does only have one more land, and it looks like he's got at least two ringleaders in there, so I think he wants to to just guarantee that he can get a ringleader out and just keep chaining goblins from there. So um, I, I kind of like that line of play with, you know, Lackey kind of pieces everything together for this draw for Dan. <coughs> with uh, And you have the sharpshooter, too, to just kind of keep everything under control. So yeah. Or at least try to. It looks like uh, Caleb did glimpse this turn. He had a uh, Wildwood Symbiote, Drew, fetched, and we're gonna. It looks like. Oh, so he's activating the Wildwood, floating, and then replaying. We're assuming you're gonna replay the Queer Ranger there. Yep, and that's what we're gonna see. Draw a card. Should end the chain. Yep, and it's gonna be a pass back to Dan Ford. So not, not a very. Uh, Productive turn. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of just spinning his wheels there. Yep. Meanwhile, Dan gets to just uh, set up and get ready to start picking off guys left and right. And he does have the third land. I saw the port, yep. so he's not missing. That's for sure. It's just how does he want to sequence this? Does he want to play um, the ringleader first, so that if I just have it have haste the next turn, um, or does he just want to get it out right now and? Be ready to go. I think I, mean, I feel like just ringleader is correct, right? Well, ringleader is a four mana. Oh, goblin, sorry, not so ringleader. The, th the, the three shooter? mana, the three mana haste goblin that makes everything cost one less. What's that guy's name? Oh, war war chief or war war leader. chief. Okay, yeah. that's what yeah, I was. That, that was the card I was thinking. Then so. that can be a good setup too if you're uh, if you're gonna put less uh, stock in the lackey. 
but it looks like he doesn't have, he just has the sharpshooter, which is great here. I mean, that, that will currently kill Caleb's entire board. So, yeah, he's, he's so really going to be looking for a um, natural order here. And if he brought in the progenitus, or does he have the progenitus main? I didn't actually check. Yeah, Did you so this is kind of Dan putting Caleb under the gun this turn to, uh, to build up his board uh, into creatures that can live through the sharpshooter or, or kill Dan. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, if Dan gets to untap here, it's uh, pretty much pretty much over based on what Caleb's deck list looks like. It's it's yeah, going to be a huge uphill battle if if Dan gets to untap with the sharpshooter. Definitely, and he doesn't have the progenitus in his 75, which means his best uh, his best thinking it is the crater hoof. Which, while that is generally very good uh, at this point, even if he has the land crater hoof, is not going to be um, nearly as devastating as it was last game. Yeah, just. Uh, you know, Just Caleb could probably get the crater hoof out and get in for maybe eight or thirteen or so, maybe. Um, but then a afterwards, Dan can clean up Caleb's board and uh, hopefully, hopefully get enough guys out to kind of uh, swarm in front of the the crater hoof. Interesting. We're sourcing against it. Oh, he can get uh, the Leah Volt here if he wants um, with the screen something up, and then every time he kills a goblin, he'll draw a card. So yeah, that's a good counterplay. That could that's definitely at least something. Yeah. Uh, let's see if that's what he is getting. Uh, that's something I can think of. Yeah, I mean X is three, so uh, and there's there's not a whole a whole lot else here. Uh, he's gone through his deck twice. Did he side it out? Ooh. Oh no. Oh, it looks like he might have sighted it out and not remembered until just now. Uh, we could have been wrong. He could have been looking for this the whole time, but I would assume he would have kept up the last mana in this in that way. So might have been a slight misstep there by Caleb, but we'll see. He yeah. then draws a card off that uh, visionary and passes it back. So a sharpshooter is gonna. Take out the Wildwood and then the Quirin Ranger, um, mm -hmm. clearing out that board, and now we're gonna see probably a ringleader into lackey, connect, lackey and Ringleader connecting and uh, kind of shutting the door on this matchup. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with the Tar Fire too. If he wins from here, I would that would be an amazing thing yeah, to see. This so. is. Uh, gonna get in for four here. Um. And get that lackey's activation or the lackey's trigger. And there's another ring leader, like you said. Into lackey. And so not the greatest the uh, second ring leader, but mm -hmm. it gets all that chaff out of the way. And uh, Dan, the top of Dan's deck is probably pretty hot right yeah. now. <laughs> and I mean, his hand he still has the matron. Yeah. He can just he can just tutor up anything exactly. he wants. Has the tar fire. Has the sharpshooter. Yeah, I I don't see any way out for uh, Caleb this round. This this game. Yep, Caleb just kind of <coughs> going kicking and screaming into <laughs> into the rest of this one. Oh, hey, hey, it's a 2-2. Two -two. The sharpshooter can't take out that one. Uh. Yep, but I have to imagine there's probably going to be a response here. <laughs> yeah, response to the heritage druid for sure. And, and, that's, yep, and it. that's it. Yep. Scoop him up. So we're 1-1 one and one now. It will go back to Caleb being on the play, which obviously is great. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of split. I'm torn. Who who I think has the true advantage here now that the sideboard has come in and we have the the extra pyrokinesis. Um, I mean, the sharpshooter is obviously the late game answer for Dan, so if he can get to that, it's, it's really looking in his favor. It's just, can he can he survive that long? Yeah, I mean, Dan's definitely the uh, the mid-range slash control deck in, in the post-board matchups here. Yep. Um, Caleb's going to be on the play in this, this next game, so that's going to be really good for him. Um, so yeah, this is just going to kind of be the test to see if uh, Dan's sideboard cards can keep up with Caleb's draw and uh, kind of force the same situation we saw in this game. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And maybe we'll see Caleb uh, get back in there with the, uh, the Leovolds, or uh, perhaps he's just going to forego it and say, hey, I'm, I'm sticking to my... Uh, my a plan with the uh, natural ordering for a, a crater hoof as quickly as possible, and I don't need the uh, the Leovold for those stalemate games because you have to imagine like if you're in that kind of situation, your game's probably uh, 
on its on its last leg there for, yeah. uh, for this matchup. If you're on the play and you're and you're searching up Leibold, yeah, you're definitely not where you want to be. Uh, yeah. I could definitely see if, if if let's say we had a game four and he was on the draw again, him bringing like having the Leibold back. But if you're on the play, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I would want to just be as streamlined as I possibly can be. Absolutely. Just kill my opponent. <laughs> Don't let him take his turns. We haven't seen a Gaia's Cradle, which is also worth noting. Um, yeah, Caleb. Uh, Caleb's uh, deck has kind of been playing out uh, more so like a uh, not 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 so much a legacy deck aside from the natural yeah. orders. Uh, well, like modern elves for the right most now. Part. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad he doesn't have the green ley lines. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, plus one, plus oh. Gain yeah. a life for each creature, right? Good, yeah, it's a good card. Immune, immune to all the uh, pingers. We need to tell, we'll need to take, tell Caleb after this. We got your tech, buddy. <laughs> Green light. Uh, it looks like Caleb's gonna go down to six. Uh, Danford happy with his hand. Let's take a look. It's got a vial, like, it looks like. A vial, wasteland, and I, some goblins? I, don't, I oh, can't that's, tell the rest. That's usually what most of the goblins' hands look yeah. like. <laughs> so, I think I, there's I, a, a lackey in there, too. I'm just really interested if he has the pyrokinesis. Um, I do think that he's got something here uh, on the left. I can't really make it out. Mm, it might that might be the Lord. He's got a Pendlehaven. It looks like Cable will keep his six scribes at the bottom, and we are off. Right. Starts with Fetchland into into Deathrite Shaman. Death That's a good opener. That is a powerful elf. I didn't take the uh, elf deck to play Planeswalkers, but you know. <laughs> You get surprised every once in a while. Also, blanks the lackey, uh, which is worth noting. Um, yeah, great, great wall. That's uh, pretty much guarantees Caleb uh, three elves on his next turn, assuming he has two more in his hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I do see at least the visionary, um, and I did see a Quern Ranger as well. So things are looking not bad. It's a good. This is about the best start you can ask for as Caleb. Yep. Let's see, if he has a tar fire, that could. See one mana, and it's the vial. Okay. It's hard, hard to not go with the vial. Kind of just gotta hope, hope nothing crazy is gonna happen from, uh, from Caleb's side. Mm -hmm. And there's our visionary draw. Probably looking for that cradle instead of just regular, you know, forest. <laughs> How weak. Um. <coughs> yep, playing around price progress. Always important. <laughs> Oh man, cool. I kind of want to see a burn matchup now. I forgot about Price of Progress. That <laughs> sounds sounds spicy. Alright, we're gonna get our Bayou, play it, tap it, and I'm expecting the Kern Ranger, but that's only because I know it's there. So let's see what else we have. Yep, there's the yep. Kern Ranger. Got the Ranger. The Ranger is good with this Deathway Shaman. Yep, making sure he's got lands in his graveyard to keep the Shaman happy. Mm hmm. See what Dan's gonna come back with here. The vial picks up. He's got wasteland. He could uh, take out the bayou if he wanted. Mm, it's probably it doesn't do that yeah. much though with the death right and the Grand Ranger. He can just <laughs> eat it. He's got a matron. I have to imagine. Looks like mountain, Pendlehaven. So yeah. Oh, and it's the, chi the goblin chief in the, the goblin chief. Uh, okay. plus one plus one lord. No, yeah, these so. are not the cards you want in this situation. He needs to be um, killing Caleb's elves, not trying to play goblins. It's just not gonna. It's not good enough right now. Yeah, and um, unfortunately, it looks like Dan's best game plan here is to like get the matron down, find the sharpshooter, and hope he's know, not dead in two turns. Three turns. Yeah, hope, hope Caleb's draw is uh, starting to uh, slow down. So we see tap two, and oh, what is that? Yeah, looks like some sort of reprint of the. Maybe it's a gem it palm incinerator? Well, it killed two. What is that card? Let's see here. Two mana kill two elves. Maybe it's this goblin settler? No, that blows up lands. That's the four mana one. Oh, one. yeah. That's a good card, though. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Goblin Settler. Yeah, it looks like Caleb, all he did on his turn was just play an elf. That was it. So, pretty anemic on that turn. 
We're gonna try and figure out what that card was. Uh, chat if you know, go ahead and type it in for us. Yeah, I'm trying to decipher this handwriting here. Maybe. Oh, it was probably the sudden demise, the sideboard card that we talked about with oh, the yes, yes, X, yes. red and X to uh, deal X damage. So that makes sense. Oh, okay. He had two mana, yep. so the Death Rite Shaman lived. Got it. Alrighty. Check that one out. So Pretty it looks good. like we have another Dryad Arbor, and uh, the, they got played this turn. Yep. But it doesn't look like Caleb has any payoff cards. Uh, what's Important what's to note, Caleb using the correct Dryad Arbor version. Oh, true. The not the not the cheaty one. The been having trouble with us. Activate death right. Get a land. Get a mana. Three, four. Okay. Looks like he has. Yep. Sacking its other dried arbor. That crater hoof. Uh, so this is gonna be for nine plus five, so fourteen damage. Not lethal, but definitely definitely a, a hit. I'm gonna feel that, and with the uh, death rate on the battlefield, um, threatening, and, and of course the crater sticking around, that's, I mean, that's a real clock. Yeah, I have to this. imagine uh, Dan is probably gonna have to matron for maybe a sting scourger and get that crater hoof uh, in Caleb's hands, and then hopefully he's able to. Uh, this is actually for 17 now because of the Quarren. I always forget the Quarren Ranger on tap and other elves. Yeah, that's pretty good with the, uh, the crater hoof there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I have, I have to imagine uh, Matron into Sting Scourger and hope you can uh, piece something together before mm -hmm. the death rate uh, eats you alive. Yeah, because he's going to go to three right now, which means it gives him <coughs> two yeah. two turns. Important to note, uh, not a whole lot of instant and sorceries in this matchup. So uh, One in the yard on, of course, Dan's side. The clock isn't as prevalent. I don't s oh, there's the natural order. So there are, there are two, though, which is all he needs. Oh, yeah, two natural orders. And Kratos does not naturally have trample, correct? It's just haste. Gives yeah, just haste. The enter the battlefield is the plus X plus X and trample, I believe. Pretty important for this next turn. So let's see what he can do. Yeah, he's. I mean, he can he can take one turn off and just have blocker for the crater hoof and the other one ones, and then take two from the death right. He can he can do that, but he has to have a, an answer for the death right the next turn. Yeah, interesting that the matron didn't come down. Uh, I believe it's two mana. Well, he didn't have a he didn't have a chance last turn. The devil just took the three. We're just well, now on his turn. So. It's it's on three this turn. It was on two the previous turn. Matron's a three. Yeah, drop, Matron's so a that's three. Why drop. It didn't happen. <coughs> so, yeah, Dan's back against the wall. I I can't imagine he can do anything other than Matron foresting Scourger right here. Uh, but he's definitely thinking through. He's yeah. trying to think through his 75 right now. What did he bring in? What answers does he have? What can he do to try and survive and stabilize? One of the pyrokinesis or both of them would be fantastic yeah. here. But you know, if he had him, he probably would have fired him off last. Why didn't uh, Why didn't they make that goblin uh, uh, a chain or whatever it is? Oh, tribal. Fire. Yeah. yeah, tribal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The pyrokinesis tribal. Give them some good ammunition. <laughs> They'd probably, in order for it to be a goblin card, they'd probably have to like make it deal random damage or mm, something true. <laughs> like goblin lore. Before they would split it random between all the creatures yeah. on the board. Comes a lot worse. <laughs> 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 Alright, so we see the matron as expected. Now what is it going to get? Guys, matron for a matron. Get some sweet chump blocking on, but that, that, that seems awful. Yeah, I don't, don't think you're long for this world. That's a gem palm, it looks like. So, what is he, what's his plan? Jump home, the death right shaman, chump block, the uh, crater hoof, and then he can't attack with the one ones because his goblins are both two twos? That, I mean, that's stable. Yeah, I mean, he, he can also, he has the lackey in his hand. Oh, so, so he, he could haste blocker. out the lackey and get in, and uh, oh, wow. maybe if he has like a siege gang or something, that's. That he could, could really turn, turn this around. Let's take a look. I don't. It looks like he might be out of other goblins to really take advantage of it. Yeah, but he gets to cycle the gem pump, so he's gonna yeah. draw again. So let's see. big draw here. Looks like another matron. Oh, that's good. That's great, actually. More chump blockers. Actually, yeah. now at this point, he can. He can. He has the option. Yeah. Oh, he's wasting cutting right Caleb off. Wait, did Caleb just get wastelanded and put the card back into his hand? Uh, I think he well, did. 
He just got wastelanded in. He, it, well, it was a Dryad Arbor, so he, oh, he, he, he cleared in Ranger. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so. so. Yeah, what's he gonna do? So, why do you think he didn't play the Lackey? There. I don't know. I mean, maybe he, maybe he, he doesn't, doesn't have a Lackey. And he misread that card in his hand. That w the card I thought was Lackey was probably the um, the sideboard card. Mm, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, so we get down top. We have another Matron. Uh, we're gonna have four lands now. Does he have any of the good any four drops that he can hit? Let's take a look. Okay, ringleader. He has yeah, the so Krenko. Krenko. He does have the Krenko. Here we go. Yep. Oh, he just had it right, in his hand. right there. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was looking <laughs> at the deck list. Did he <laughs> see him cast it? So Krenko's coming down and uh, with haste, very buying some time. Yeah. That's a lot of that's a lot of two twos since yep. they're plus one plus one. Does does Krenko also pump? Or also give the anthem, so they're three no, twos. No, he he yeah. doesn't. He just makes the one ones equal to the goblins. Mm. Um, but I mean, two turns of activations and, and oh, yeah. Caleb's dead, so. Well, let's see, Caleb is fetching in response. Does he have, does he have an Abrupt Decay in his hand? Is he going to Abrupt Decay the, 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 um, the Lord? Yeah, I mean, if Caleb brought in any of his removal, um, which he probably, he might have, uh, uh, assuming the Sharpshooter oh, no. was going to maybe ruin him. Looks like we're just passing back to Caleb, not activating. I mean, you can do it at any time, so I, li I like Dan holding it uh, and making Caleb have to like guess what, essentially whether or not he should attack. Yeah, like especially if Dan could vial something in mm -hmm. and get an extra goblin towards that count. It'd be six, uh, definitely six tower with a dump, toughness with one one. Yeah, definitely better to make Caleb think about it. <coughs> or about his actions, mm -hmm. rather. And I think Caleb did pass, so end of turn we're going to see that matron. Yep, so here comes the matron. Now what are we getting? We already have the Cranko just naturally. <laughs> what, are we, what are we looking for? What do we, what yeah. do we want? I mean, you could get Sharpshooter, uh, which would have haste then too. That's true. Um, doesn't do much for the Crater Hoof, but it jump. keeps everything clean. Is that another right? jump pump? No, it is a Sharpshooter. Okay. Yeah, so that's the Sharpshooter. So yeah, it kills the Dry Arbor, I guess too. It's nice. Yeah, it just keeps all of uh, Caleb's creatures at bay for the most part, and then uh, lets him just chump the Crater Hoof all day. And uh, is he is he dead? Let's see, because uh, he gets three. And then he plays the sharpshooter, shoots down the two, and he gets one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, twenty, eighteen, twenty, 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 twenty. Oh yeah, he's very dead. Exactly. This is far over. Yeah, I think. Let's see if he sees it. I mean, I feel like it looks like he's been setting up for this for a few turns. So I think he's. Yeah. I think he's well aware of what he's. Doing here, and there's a sharpshooter. Shoot down. So Caleb does have the ab abrupt decay. Yeah, I mean, if, if, he, had the, if he had the abrupt decay, I feel like that would have already happened, so. Yeah. Or the untap gets blocked because of the ranger, rather, so. Mm -hmm. Well, that's still. I don't think that saves him. Yeah, still 14, 17, uh, 2 2 goblin tokens coming plus, in. Plus just the actual matron and the. Uh, uh, yeah, so. 18. But yeah, that was kind of a misstep there by Dan, not not killing the Crown Ranger first. Because uh, then he couldn't make it untap. Yeah, so you got 24 power of goblins if he comes in with everything but the uh, Cranko and the sharpshooter since they'll be tapped. And that's not even counting, like, if, if Dan has uh, anything he could hard cast with all of his mana. Yeah, he, he might be off though now. Like, uh, he might be off by, like, two points. Because there is the two blockers. We'll see. Yeah. So, yeah. If what, what is that? Wait, Caleb it looks kind of like Warren Instigator. Warren but Instigator, it, it, okay. Artwork, and it's a reprint of some sort, because it has the... Uh, Dot at the bottom. And it looks like we're attacking without making the goblins first. So, mm -hmm. so just trying to play it safe, I guess. Yeah, Going I'm a little surprised. That, especially if that is a turn. Well, if that's an instigator, that's a double striker, right? If I'm right. It looks like the instigator, yeah. It okay. must be some, maybe like the new uh, goblin deck reprint. So this will be uh, six from the tokens, and then potentially four more if the instigator gets to connect and double strike. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <coughs> I, I am a little surprised though. I, I, I mean, my math could be wrong, but I thought he had lethal if he would have just made the one ones and attack with the instigator as well and all the other guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too certain. 
So, and yeah, that's well, it. That's Caleb will scoop it up. So, goblins taking down Caleb Schreier on elves, the superior tribe? <laughs> Question mark? Possibly. Looks like we have the resident goblin expert coming uh, in. Uh, Mike Hadley, yep. <laughs> Swooping in from the side, letting yep. everyone know what's going on. <laughs> And it looks like, I think he's explaining actually that he did have lethal there. Yeah. Um, so, good to always get some tips from uh, the local uh, experts with their pet decks. It's one of the nice things about Legacy. Uh, generally, people fall in love with a certain archetype and just play the same thing over and over and get uh, really polished with it. Yeah. And I, I mean, Hadley's been playing uh, Goblins for how long? Do you know? Even? As long as I've known him, which is eight years. Yeah, I don't think I've point. seen him play anything else. And, uh, <laughs> Foiled it up two whole times since yeah. one got stolen <laughs> from his car. So two full foil goblin lists. Very impressive. So, all right. Uh, do we have a backup match? Do we now? I'm going to go check looks on like that. they might be finished. Yeah. I'll, I'll be, go, I'll be uh, check. Just return in just here. a moment. Um, yeah, uh, this... Uh, this tournament is uh, being uh, hosted by the uh, AZ Eternal Magic uh, group, and uh, there will be uh, other satellite events and uh, championship events in Arizona um, for for this uh, Legacy series. Uh, so if you are a local player and want to check it out, uh, I would go over to the uh, AZ Eternal Magic Facebook page. Um, and also the Arizona Eternal Magic Facebook group uh, do a lot of posting over there uh, with the, the upcoming schedules and everything. Uh, and if you are in the area, uh, the store we're at right now is Desert Sky Games Chandler. It's a, it's a pretty big open store. Uh, if you like magic or anything similar to magic, whether it's board games or other miniatures, it's a pretty cool store to check out. And uh, we do, we are going to have a backup match. Um, they're going to their third game, still resolving mulligans. We're going to have them move over, so it might take a minute or two. Um, it's going to be <laughs> an interesting one. I don't really know what to say about it. It's going to be Storm, Adazium Tendrils, um, versus 12 Post. Nice. So they are sideboarded, and let's take a look. I don't know what 12 Post does against Storm. Let's see. Probably they've makes a lot of mana and tries to kill them before they get killed, I imagine. I, yeah. <laughs> so they've got a Chalice of the Void in the main, some Pithing Needles. I mean, that really does much. Um, what do they have on the sideboard? Oh, I don't even know what some of these cards do. Boom Pile? You Boom Pile. Tell me that card. Is that an unstable card? <laughs> it sounds, it sounds like it. I don't think they allowed those in uh, Legacy. They do have four Leyland of the Voids. That's, that's a commander that's card. Oh, okay. Form Hina, tap. Flip a coin. If you win the flip, destroy all non-land permanents. Oh wow! Okay. I I never expected to see that in Legacy. So oh. and that's from the that's from the twelve <laughs> post, post deck. deck. Yeah. So I'm not. I mean, we're not, not gonna see that side sure, of it. Yeah. What? But that's I I guess that's a board wipe. That's colorless. Yeah, it gets her like planeswalkers and everything else too. Uh, that's so true. I don't know. Interesting. Just a little bit of spice. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of spice. And then we've got uh, the Portland Land of the Voids. Those are going to be big players. Lodestone Golems, if you can get those out. Obviously, Sphere of Resistance. Three Sphere of Resistance, a Surgical Extraction as well. So there's actually a lot of sideboard hate out of this 12 post deck uh, against Storm. Um, but he has to make it, you know, to turn two, to cast these spheres and such. Um, yeah, if, uh, if uh, Storm is uh, being, being merciful or stumbling on its draws, uh, the 12 post deck uh, might be able to to uh, take over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they were resolving Logan, so I'm not quite sure where they were uh, in that process. Uh, so bear with us while we're trying to figure out. Yep, we'll be uh, trying to piece it together right along with you guys. Let's see. And uh, I do believe. So on the left side, we do have our Storm player, and that's going to be. The, oh wait, I apologize. I'm flipped around here. On the Let's see. Go ahead, guys. Yeah, uh, so we got Storm on the right, it looks like. That's a swamp to me. So, let's see. Resident, uh, or not so much Resident, he's a Tucson, Tucson hero, Nick Gill. Mm, well um, known yeah. in Arizona. Shirts, mats. Everything's made of this man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Nick Gill on the right, and Tommy Kaufman on the left with the Suva post. And uh, 
Do we know if this was game three? Or? This is game three. Oh, this right, is cool. game three. Storm was on the play, it looks like. Starting off with that scalding tarn. Probably mm -hmm. going to do a can trip here. We can only hope. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, uh, the game might be uh, ending soon if, uh, if something else comes out. <laughs> yeah. Now, worth noting, Tommy did have the... Um, the ancient tomb, which means he did. He if he had the chalice, he could have done a turn one, which would have been great for him. But unfortunately, it looks like he or the, um, you know, any of the spheres. So the fact that he didn't play those uh, makes me think that he has some some major player, right? If he didn't have those on turn two, I'm expecting another double land and maybe a lodestone goal, or something along those lines. Yeah, uh, lodestone or thought not seer maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe he has the surgical in his hand, but I I would find it hard to believe that he would keep a no plays right on with a doubling land. Yeah, no, no plays with two mana. You have to imagine his follow-up turn is going to be pretty strong to uh, stay in the game with Storm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Alright, and so our Storm player, we're going to see uh, a Dark Rit. Oh, okay. That doesn't bode well uh, for our Vesuvius Post player. Yep, this and we're rolling out dice as well, so let's see, <laughs> let's see what's going to happen here. This one might not be long for this world. Let's see. <laughs> might be a quick backup match. Uh, and we're just going to put it on the Swamp. I like that. You multi multi use of their lands. Yeah, not to be confused with the awaken mechanic. Mm, true. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean I I'm I was almost confused, so <laughs> Alright, we're up to four mana. Going to five we're we just seeing the Adnazium straight away. Yeah, it looks yep. like it. Alright, he's at nineteen, so Still we've got a lot to work with. Yeah. So we're looking for LEDs, <laughs> Lotus Petals, Jotaxium Probes, Arnfernal Tutors, right? That's pretty much the Yeah, LED pedal, chrome mox. Um, Got to be some some sort of combination of free mana. Lands don't do it. He could just be building up for uh, a next turn, trying to make his hand resilient to the oncoming uh, thought knots here. Also true. That would still be a very resilient hand. One. And then uh, that way he can kind of just go off on turn three. Unfortunately, he's got the tendrils there, so yeah. And I think uh, I was trying to do it as quick as I could, but I think there was 15 there. Uh, it was either 15 or 16. I, I'm thinking. So he's probably at three, or possibly a little bit less. Uh, does he have another way? If, can he go deeper, or is, it, is he risking his life if he goes any deeper now? Uh, there's Pass and Flames probably still in the deck. Mm. So, will he risk it for the Biscuit? Well, let's see, did he have, does he have enough to just go off? He has a Jotaxium Probe, he has a Lotus Petal, a lot of Ponders and Brainstorms, which really aren't what you need right now. Uh, yeah. He does he have a Dark Ritual? I, don't, I didn't see one. And it looks like his hand is more Infernal Tutors with no LEDs. He's going to let it resolve. Um, so I, I believe he's at three, but we aren't positive on that. Somewhere between one and three at this point after probing. Yeah. Not much I can say with certainty. We'll, uh, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt and give him the three. I like it. Uh, it looks like he does have the Thought Knot. That's why he did keep, so good call there. The Eye of Ugin, um, the Warping Whale, countering Sorcery. Does that count as the Ad Nauseam? Uh, doesn't it? Or no, I don't think it's an instant. I apologize. Yeah, I know it's an instant, so that's not going to do much. Yeah, it looks like Tommy was trying to set up a Thought Knot mm -hmm. uh, play here with some sort of maybe Warping Whale counterplay if uh, Nick was trying to do a cantrip. I'm a little surprised that he didn't Warping Whale the, the probe. The probe yeah. or or the um, originally the, the the second ritual, the Cabal. Because that one, that one is a sorcery, I believe. I, I know think Dark Cabal is, is... Is Cabal also instant? instant? Is this whole deck? Just instant? Just goes to show how much I know about ad nauseum tendrils. Yeah, Cabal's an instant too, oh goodness. so the then probe yeah, the probe. only target along with the therapy this turn. <coughs> so. Looks like he's writing down all of those cards. Or is he just, oh, he's just going to play up. You know, Good guy Nick Gill just playing up for us. It looks like... Alright, Warping Wheel just countered the, the first Cabal. So, cool. That's and it looks like, it. Uh, as far as Nick's deck list goes, if that uh, Tendrils does get hit by Thought Knots here, his only win condition would be an Empty the Warrens if he brought it in. And he actually just discarded it to his own accord. I believe he's ending his turn right now. And yep. So protecting the Tendrils by discarding yep, it. Yep, I like move. that. Stopping it from exiling. Nick Hill is a proficient <laughs> Ad Nauseam player. Yeah. <laughs> I have uh, gotten beaten up by his Ad Nauseam deck multiple times. I'm curious to see what he keeps. Um, what uh, what are those cards on the right? Can you, I can't. 
these two right here. Those are Chain of Vapors. Chain of Vapors. Oh, that's the sack of land, right, to redo it, essentially? Yeah, bounce, bounce. on land permanent, and then the permanence controller can sacrifice land to copy its effect, and it can go on until someone decides not to sacrifice a land. Hmm. So pretty good for the Storm player, when especially no in a permanence. format like Vintage, where you have a lot of moxes. You can kind of sacrifice your lands to build a Storm count and ramp yourself even further. Pretty good enabler. Yeah, definitely. Bounce your own mox, make more mana. It's a good day. Yeah. And it doesn't look like Tommy has a whole lot of ways to interact with the graveyard aside from the ley line. Uh, let's see, so. But the thought not, I mean, the thought not's pretty good here. And, I mean, we didn't see Nick with anything that's really gonna bring it home. I mean, he has a lot of, he has a lot of card selection in his hand. That's, that's a certainty. So. It's it's hard to say what what he really has access to because there's so much card manipulation. But yeah. As Jeez. we can see, there's nothing right now that's gonna make or break anything. Yeah, two ponders and a, a brainstorm is pretty much gonna give you the pick of the litter of your next your next few draws. So mm -hmm. uh, Nick should be able to piece together something that lets him uh, get a pass and flames draw going and. Uh, Pretty elementary from there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Appreciate that. Yep, good guy, Nick. So, Nick, Tommy's gonna have the thought knot. Uh, Nick has at least one chain of vapor still, so uh, kind of forces Tommy to take the chain of vapor uh, if he wants to try and go for the kill next turn and get the game over with, which uh, I have to imagine is pretty appealing with Nick uh, with it within range yeah. of the Thought Knot. Definitely. Um, otherwise, Tommy can, you know, kind of concede that uh, his Thought Knot's going to get bounced and just slow Nick down to prevent any uh, top deck or ponder into something super strong. Yeah, and I, I, kinda, I, I personally like that play uh, of taking, like, the Dark Grit or one of the, you know, the Brainstorm maybe even. Because the rest of the hand is relatively, like, unless there's an LED in there, the, the hand is relatively anemic. Um, yeah. So. And e even with the LED, I mean, what what are you going to do? Um, That's true, LED and then tutor for the past in flames, and then be stuck on two mana. Well, he so. does have he does have the, the dark grits in the grave. He has a dark grit and cabal in the grave. Right, but the path. So you're you're going to be without your hand if you're trying to go hellbent uh, yeah. for the uh, infernal tutor to find the past in flames. So, and that's really um, his only avenue of uh, closing the game out now. Unless he has the empty still in his deck. Uh, we so we do see an LED from. in Nick's hand, which is uh, pretty good. So put two back. He doesn't have the fetch though, right? I don't believe he has the no, fetch. No, I think so he had a basic any... island, okay. which is pretty good because uh, he can bounce the thought knots here uh, on Tommy's turn and then trigger the draw from the thought knot. So if Nick wants to protect a specific card, he has to put it as the second card on, or the, the first card he puts back on his brainstorm. Yep, yep. And then because uh, the thought knot would theoretically just come back down and get he to did. steal whatever. Whatever the top card is. You can always just leave the Thought Knot in play, though, and just take four. I mean, he's well, at, oh, he's at three. Never yeah, mind. He certainly can't range. take four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he can, but. Yeah. Forgot about that whole nauseum. That seems like forever ago. Yeah. All right, so there's that island. So yeah, it looks like setting up, LED. getting the LED in place so he can doesn't have to worry about protecting that one. Interesting. So. Right. What are we doing so with this? So you've already played your land. I don't think Nick can afford to do this, unless we have a unless um, our life total is uh, discrepant. There's no way he's at. But one I, I don't four. think he's above five, especially after all those cards and a yeah, taxi probe. I think he's at one actually, but it, it's all the same. Yeah. Under four. I mean, maybe he's hoping to like ponder into a lotus petal to keep the chain up. Yeah, but it's gonna be a shuffle to be blind. He already knows. I mean, he'd get one look, yeah. and then he'd get a shuffle. Yeah, one look, look and really a blind. Okay, right, so it's just going through the, the chain papers. now. Interesting. Draws a card, and that's it. That's that. So we just want to protect the LED. 
by, put, yeah. by playing it. A sweet play would uh, would maybe have let. No, no, he could just recast the LED. I was gonna say sacrifice the land to uh, get the LED so he can take it out, but oh. that doesn't work too well. <laughs> yeah, not unless he has another double land. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're looking at <laughs> two a bunch of cantrips and a bunch of tutors. Dark petition and two infernal tutors. Yep. So again, Nick kind of stranded in here. Uh, you can't fire off the dark petition, and uh, his tutors can only really find another tutor or a ponder. So gonna be uh, gonna be a reaching for whatever he's got in store for himself on the top of his deck. Well, he does have the ponder, so I mean he gets a pretty yeah. deep look here. Four cards if he really needs it. So is that is that a promo cloud post of some sort? That is one of the inside? posts. Yeah. I'm not sure. It, it looks like a cloud it's post. It's not to a me. glimmer void. I no, know that. It's got to <laughs> be the cloud then. Yep. All right, and we're gonna see uh, digging that deep. Ponder. What's he gonna find? Lotus Ooh, petal. The petal. It looks like a uh, dual land of some sort. Underground sea. You just take the pedal though, right? It's two pedals and an underground C. Okay. So Nick, Nick could probably get something going. Um, still, still can't really work with anything in his hand, so he might not be able to. Um, Cause if he doesn't, he'll piece, be on he can't really piece together like a stacked draw effect with the LED and a tutor. Uh, so yeah, he's probably gonna have to ship this back, I think, and maybe dig for, for an uh, LED. Another one, right? That would that would help him out. That would work. Get yeah, and another LED lets him uh, go off. Yep. And uh, a chain of vapor buys him another turn at the cost of uh, his best card. Yeah. Being <laughs> stripped away. <laughs> Details. Hey, it's, he's living, right? He's alive that yeah, way. Yeah, he's he's just trying to play magic like here, but uh, Tommy doesn't want to let him. All right, let's see how lucky Nico can get here, and. Uh, didn't see it. All right, got a brainstorm. brainstorm. Just That's keep a on good reading. Re land, land. Is that land, land, land? I think. I don't think I saw an out. No. Oh. Yeah, I think that was just three lands right off the top. That's that's not what you want to see. What is that? What is that blue card in his hand? On the right side? Not not the far right, but the one next to it. Which card? Far right side. Second hand. We'll find out in a second. Because either he's dead, <laughs> or, <laughs> or he's got something to save him. I don't know how he's getting out of this. So he's cracking the LED. But he only has three mana. What, do you, what can you do with three mana? I have to imagine he has to get black mana or, or blue mana for like a chain of vapor. Echoing truth, sure, same same difference. Yeah, you can't really string anything together because all mm -hmm. your combo cards are black and then pass the train and the red. Yeah. Oh, uh, he does get to draw a card here. Yeah, so he's gonna have one blue floating. Maybe like his best draw is probably a ponder. Hopefully he gets to stack something up because the will come down again and yep. in the same spot. So or a brainstorm, you can hide it on top. Yeah. But I don't even know what he's looking for. He's at four mana. Uh, what, what can you even find um, that you can put on top that'll do anything for you? Yeah, it's gonna be two pretty good uh, Alright, like you got a ponder into a chain or another bounce effect if he has one. It's just it's Tommy. It's Tommy's turn now. He finally gets a turn. <laughs> Lucky man. <laughs> I, think it's, I think all of Tommy's turns <laughs> have taken about two minutes. <laughs> so you see another cloud post. <laughs> that uh, and that looks like. Oh, Ben Chamberlain. It looks like 
because his mic has turned off. So we're not sure how long that's been going for, but I hope you guys don't think I'm actually crazy. Right, should be back. Okay, good. So we saw the thought not and that's, yep, yeah, extend the hand, land on top. And Tommy does get it. It's going to be 2 1 for a 12 post. Thought not zero soft lock. So I'm I'm actually a little surprised by this. I, I if if you told me that it was gonna be Storm versus 12 post, I would have said Storm's gonna win. Blind. Yeah, I I have to imagine uh, Nick knew that either a chalice for I, I think he's still chalice for one it, when you open on the soul land. Um, but yeah, the thought not zero or a lodestone golem coming down on turn two. So he probably just felt like he was uh, under enough pressure to merit um, going for it right away. I mean, he had, he had 20 life to work with. He, he, yeah. I mean, his, his ad nausea was pretty bad, realistically. Uh, I mean, he didn't hit any, any LEDs. He didn't hit, I mean, he just hit a bunch of cantrips and his tendrils. Not really what you're looking for when you're, when you're trying to go off. Yeah, hitting, hitting the tendrils, uh, having, having a Thought Not Seer, being able to come down and break apart your hands, and then not having enough life to just eat a Thought Not Seer attack. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of kind of what allowed Tommy to have enough time uh, and put Nick under enough pressure to close the game out. Yeah. So I think that's it. I don't think we have any other matchups for you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break until round three, um, which should be starting in pretty soon. I would I would guess in the next ten minutes or less. So. Yep. Should be uh, should be underway here soon. Hopefully. Uh, for chat. Uh, that is worried Nick Gill did not win. Uh, I apologize to all that wanted Nick Gill to win. Yes, the aliens uh, showed Nick Gill what was up in that <laughs> round. And draws the aliens. Do you ever get to see an Emrakul take his turn? And then he could tendrils himself. That would have been great. But anyway, we'll see all of you next round, round three. Uh, until then. Yep, don't go anywhere.